Hello viewers, here is a Lasco 3733. Today we will be servicing this unit, so we're going to clean it and we're going to oil the motor. Now I've never been inside one of these newer ones. This one is dated, uh, let's see here, 2009-10, so it's about eight years old. Still ha it has like a, it's not necessarily the older Lasco logo, it's kind of like an in between the older one and the one that we have today. But um, it looks like it's a fairly serviceable unit from the outside. Of course, um, once we get inside it, we could uncover something that makes it an entirely different story. So let's go ahead and plug it up. We'll run it for a minute here just so we can get a before and after. If you want to see a full video of it running, you can take a look at the initial checkout video for this fan. It's got a, a, a different sound to it than like the ones from this year or last year do. This sounds more like a deep rumbling sound. It's not that loud, but it doesn't have that annoying whirring sound to it. But anyways, let's get inside this thing and see what we can do. So, first thing we gotta do is remove the screws the guard here there's two on the sides and then four on the top and bottom okay so the guards have now been removed here's the rear guard they're not too dirty but there's definitely uh, enough dirt on there to warrant a, a service Looks like there's one, there was, I saw one somewhere. There's one broken slat on this card. Here it is, at the top there. So we can just glue that back. Um, and the front guard has uh, more dust on it, but that's going to get cleaned as well. So we'll set those aside. Now, inside the fan itself, the blade honestly isn't too flimsy. Um, it seems like it's kind of brittle, that's a little bit concerning, but um, it probably was used in a window. So normally the blade just pulls right off. It's kind of hard to, to pull it off with this ring. Oh no, I guess you can hold it like this. Okay, it's not going to come off easily, is it? Nope, of course not. It's coming a little bit. Just gonna slowly work this off of here. The, uh, the blade actually cracked as I was taking it off. I don't know if this is manufactured defectively or if it was just used in a window for the majority of its life, but it's, plastic is very brittle. You can see it's like deteriorating. So it cracked. So I just put a, a drop of glue, or a line of glue rather, where it cracked. And um, I think that'll be okay. So let's just throw this back on here and give it a, a test.
I don't want to put it on all the way because I won't be able to get it off again. But let's try that. I think that'll be fine. Alright. So that's kind of annoying. But whatever. I guess that's a, a rescue run when you're working with these cheap things. Alright, so let's uh, carry on here. I'll try to be even more careful than I was with this blade because clearly it is not uh, out there to be very sturdy. I think what happened was when I pulled it off it, it the blade caught on the on the side of the fan here because you can see the, the blade goes in past the, the frame. So perhaps that's what happened. There's really no way to avoid that. Especially with how stiff it is on the shaft. Try to work it off really carefully this time. Okay. Yeah, that's holding up pretty sturdy. I think it'll be fine. Ridiculous, but it'll be fine. So let's keep going here. I'd like to remove the motor because we're going to take that apart, clean it, and oil it. I think we can do that from the back here with these screws. like a sticky substance holding this in. So I want to remove the switch and I want to remove the handle. And the switch comes off this camera. So the switch we need to push in these two two tabs and then turn them like this and then that releases itself and the handle get a new camera angle again the handle's got these two tabs push them out and then it through we're going to do one at a time to avoid putting too much strain on the thing. I hope this doesn't break. I'm a little concerned that this may break. Oh, I guess it doesn't break. Oh, the challenge is getting the other side off. Because now the pressure on the handle is greater.
handle is removed. And let's see what else we got to do here. The cord comes right out like this. And then it's just a matter of pulling it off with the sticky stuff. parts and wash them with water so I have to say as cheap as it is and I'm very disappointed in the blade it's a fairly serviceable design as far as cleaning goes now this motor is going to be a different story because just to lubricate it we're going to have to split it apart but uh, get to that momentarily. I'm going to go wash the parts first and then we'll get some video on the motor. The plastic parts have been cleaned. They are now drying. So let's move on to the motor for the time being. The first thing I want to do is get this plastic housing off of here. and I believe it's held on with these four screws. And I've actually never serviced one of these motors before. So this will be a learning curve here. I don't know what the point of this is. I'm guessing they intend this to guide airflow through the motor somehow. I don't know. Passenger screws onto it. And I guess actually this could be washed too. Wish I knew that. That component is now drawing with the other components. So let's open this up here. First thing I will do is just brush off some of the dirt dust that's on here. Oh, the glue just let go in there. I gotta glue that again. And if this was really bad, you could take it outside and blow it out with compressed air, but it's not that bad. So we'll just do this and I'll clean off the table afterwards. Okay. So I believe these four screws are going to open this up. So here's the inside of the motor. Oh wow. <laughs> that is pathetic. You know, I, I always thought that these motors were longer. Not only is this not as wide as a standard or standard, you know, like a, a, a 1980s box fan motor. It's not even half as thick. There's 12 inch fans that have bigger stators than this. The rotors than this. This is ridiculous. If no one that's what's in here, I'm surprised it even works as good as it does. There's nothing to this motor. 
this motor is absolutely tiny. Look at the surface area of the stator and the rotor. That's pathetic. Well, okay. Well, while we're in here, I'll clean this out because I want to get as much dust off here as possible because this is going to be running pretty hot being so doggone small. And the dust just keeps the heat on it, so we want to make sure this is as clean as we can get it. No dust build up in there. Okay, that's good enough for me. Actually, we'll clean the back bearing too while this is open because it'll be easier. There actually is evidence of lubricant in there. I can see it. So this, this in fact shipped with a satisfactory amount of lubricant in it. And there really was no issue with this pin down time. So I don't really think, although I've seen these things lock up, I don't think lack of lubrication is really their uh, point of failure. I think their main point of failure is when the vents get covered in dust. Because it doesn't take all that long for vents of this size to block with dust. You can give it two or three years of use in a, an environment where it's relatively dusty, or if you've got you know, dogs that shed, give it a couple of weeks and this will be blocked up. And once this blocks up, the air just doesn't move through the motor and it just doesn't cool. And because it is undersized and running hot, um, it just overheats. So that's my uh, theory with the failure point of these fans. And you can see, even on the front here, the the um, the dust is sticking all in, inside here, which means there was lubricant there. So that's not too bad. And this fan is almost ten years old, so the fact there's still trace of oil in there is kind of interesting. It means there was a reasonable amount of oil at some point. Okay, so we're getting ready to put this back on now. Put a couple of drops of oil on here and we're going to use the infamous uh, oil. <coughs> Excuse me. The infamous 3-in-1 oil and a blue can which is non-detergent and it's for fans. couple drops of oil in there and this may be hard to push in because you have to overcome the see there's air resistance here because there's no hole in the bearing the air kind of compresses in there uh, but that's normal Spinning pretty freely. Okay, now we'll put some oil in here. Actually, there's a little bit of dust in there. That's no good. Okay.
Now I'm going to scroll. I'm going to scroll these together, but I'm not going to tighten them yet. set this together as it's going to go. So we're going to tighten these in a pattern when I go across as much as we can so it torques evenly. Okay, and now it's probably not going to spin right away. Although actually in this case it's spinning relatively freely. But we're going to take a screwdriver and just kind of bang it a little bit and that, that's going to align up the bearings. This is not uh, freeing up as much as it should be. It's still very stiff. Go ahead and power it on for a minute. Still not as good as I'd like it to be. Perhaps these were not uh, tightened quite enough. Normally these don't have to go very tight at all. You know, but I'm used to working with quality motors. This is not exactly a quality motor. I guess that's as good as it's going to get. I find that kind of ridiculous, but whatever. So that's that for the motor. Go we'll get the parts and put it back together. All right, we'll put this back on first. This has a couple of sharp pieces to it where the screws go in. 
So you got to be kind of careful. It just wasn't wasn't machined very well, and nobody took the time to to clean off the um, shavings from when they drilled the holes. Anyways, um, let's get this screwed back on. This is relatively easy to do. Motor um, goes through the through the struts and then on. So the wire ends up in the right place. These bearings are the stupid seal bearings. And they just don't hold the oil like they're supposed to. Or rather like I'd like them to. They're not really supposed to hold oil, that's the point. They're supposed to be disposable. Let me get the switch so I don't put that on the wrong way. So right now it's on three. It was to go like that. How would this? I think it's gonna go like this. Says that'll work. Okay, and then it's part of my background. Uh, the sticky stuff is still here, so I think we can just kind of put this back in as it came out, and that won't be an issue. It's kind of nice that that stuff is reusable. this under here just so it fits more flush in, into the track there. the blade on the guards and the handle and we're going to be all set with this one. Yeah, as I was washing this I kind of noticed that part of the, the um, dial is more yellowed than the other. One side is more yellow than the other, so I think it's definitely spent a lot of its life in a window, which would explain why the rear guard is, or not the guard, the blade is so brittle. And I think this will probably only last a few more years, and the blade will just fly apart at some point. 
uh, because it's already much more brittle than it should be. Now, because this was so difficult to get off, I'm going to take some detergent oil and put this on the shaft. hopes that it will make the blade a little bit easier to get off when it comes time to service this again. The spin down time is actually better than it was, so that's good. Let's do a test run here. Low. It's not shaking too bad. Medium. Sounds like there's something on one of the blades. Oh, you know what it was? It was a string of hot glue. That'll do it. That's exactly what that sound was. Still there. Ah, that's what the sound is right there. Another piece of plastic deteriorating. Now it sounds normal. it is all cleaned up and lubricated and ready to go it's uh, top of the fan is not in very good condition I don't know what happened to it it's all jacked up over here and whatever um, I don't think the blades gonna last too much longer I think at some point it's just gonna fly apart because of how brittle it is and when that happens the switch and the handle on the feet will get used for a different project Let's test it out. Considering the size of that motor, it actually moves a decent amount of air, but there's no doubt it's cheap and it's not going to last, but yeah, we'll get a couple years out of it, hopefully, I don't know, goodbye.